Mark, what's your biggest takeaway from these numbers? Uh, growth is slowing. Uh, job growth now is uh, consistent with uh, stable unemployment. Uh, I will point out an interesting point. Uh, the payrolls we processed towards the end of the month were meaningfully weaker <laughs> than those that we processed towards the start of the month. So things appear to be slowing, and the rate of decline is, uh, is, is continues. There's, there's, there's no indication yet that we're going to settle in at 130 or 135. Feels like we're going to throttle back even more more than that, and we'll see that in subsequent months. Mark, do you uh, put the this slowing is broad? Sorry, I mean, do you put this in the camp of the number we got yesterday from the ISM manufacturing number, or do you put this in the camp of, look, we're slowing down because it's harder and harder to find people who who want or need jobs at this point? Well, it's a little bit of both, but I I think the most significant aspect of the recent slowing is the, the broader <laughs> slowing in the economy. Demand for labor is beginning to weaken. Hiring is uh, weakening across the board. That, that's the point I was going to make. The broad-based weakening is less hiring pretty much everywhere. Uh, but we are seeing more weakness in manufacturing. And I do think in the coming months we will see manufacturing turn negative. And that's the, the message we've been getting in the most recent data. So uh, I, I think, yes, some industries are having trouble filling open positions. And that's uh, slowing job growth. But uh, even more importantly, uh, demand is slowing in many sectors. And and that, I don't see any, any stabilization in that. That's going to continue. Mark, we, we had a, a debate earlier this morning, or I don't even know if it was a debate. We were just talking about the ISM manufacture, or non-manufacturing number that we're going to get today. How important is that? And do you think that you'll see weakness in, in that? What's that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow. I made the same see, mistake. Yeah, that you'll see weakness in that number, uh, again, based on what you see in manufacturing. And I, I guess that's because we're more of a services economy now. I'm just trying to figure out what, what this is going to mean to the broader economy and which signals we should be paying the most attention to. Well, I, I think that non-man is important because if the <laughs> troubles in manufacturing, agriculture, transportation, the, the sectors that are on the front lines of the trade war and getting creamed by the trade war, if that, uh, if that is beginning to bleed out into the rest of the economy and starting to slow hiring in the service side of the economy, then, of course, th this becomes a much bigger problem. This becomes the, the fodder for an economic downturn or recession. So that non-manufacturing ISM survey will give us a window into whether that's happening or not. And if it does, then obviously job growth will continue to slow, unemployment will begin to rise, and, and then recession risks become you know, very significant. Mark, what about this argument that a manufacturer is a small part of the economy? Um, I have to imagine that with each subsequent downturn, that manufacturing plays less of a role. And I'm wondering, um, you know, even people might freak out, but if the unemployment rate were to drift up to 4%, which would still be at or near all-time lows. Of course, you might have a confidence effect, but lots of people would still have jobs. And if, job, if wage growth remained relatively strong, you could have the consumer and the service sector powering us through, uh, even while manufacturing went through a correction. Well, if you add up manufacturing, uh, agriculture broadly defined, because that's also in recession because of the trade war, in the transportation sector, because whatever the manufacturers and farmers produce, they got to ship it, and that's in recession. That's now 20 percent of the gross product of the economy. So, yeah, by itself, you know, that's not going to push the overall economy into recession. Certainly means that we're not going to go anywhere fast. But that, if that's the end of the story, then yeah, no, no recession. But but I do think there are there is growing evidence that it is starting to affect other parts of the economy. And I, I disagree with you, Steve. If unemployment rises, even from a, little, a low level, and by the way, that happens every single time when we go into recession, it's coming off a very low level, that spooks people. They immediately sense that. You know, they, no, they that. sense the slower job growth. They, they, they sense the fewer job openings. They sense the pay increases aren't as big. They become more cautious. Businesses see that. They become more cautious in their hiring. You can see how we get into this self-reinforcing vicious cycle. That's a recession. So. If we go from 3.7 to 4, and, and we do that in the next two, three, four months, that, that would be a strong signal that we are headed for an economic downturn, even though it's a, a low unemployment rate. So right now, Mark, our rapid update, which you help us compile, thank you very much, which is a collection of estimates on the street, we're running 1.9 on third quarter GDP. What does the fourth quarter looks like, look like? What does 2020 look like by your best guess? Well, I, I think if the, if the trade war uh, is put on hold uh, relatively soon and it doesn't escalate, I, I, there's no scenario I see where we de-escalate uh, the war. But if we don't escalate it, 
And I, I think, you know, confidence should be strong enough, businesses should hold in well enough that we continue to get growth somewhere between one and a half and two percent, which just is a notch below potential. Unemployment might notch a little higher, but not high enough, fast enough to push us into recession. But if the trade war escalates, if we, you know, the, the tariffs that are threatened to uh, take place towards the end of the year actually take place, then I think recession is likely.